BEPOSIX was an Italian Dutch satellite for X ray astronomy which played a crucial role in resolving the origin of gamma ray bursts, GRBs, the most energetic events known in the universe. It was the first X ray mission capable of simultaneously observing targets over more than three decades of energy, from 0.1 to 300 kV with relatively large area, good for the time energy resolution and imaging capabilities with a spatial resolution of one arc minute between 0.1 and 10 keV. BEPOSIX was a major program of the Italian Space Agency with the participation of the Netherlands Agency for Aerospace Programs the prime contractor for the space segment was Alenia while Nuova Telespazio led the development of the ground segment. Most of the scientific instruments were developed by the Italian National Research Council while the wide field cameras were developed by the Netherlands Institute for Space Research and the LECS was developed by the Astrophysics Division of the European Space Agency's ESTEC facility. BEPOSIX was named in honour of the Italian physicist Giuseppe Beppo Achillini. SACS stands for Satellite per Astronomia Aragi X or Satellite for X-ray Astronomy. X-ray observations cannot be performed from ground-based telescopes, since Earth's atmosphere blocks most of the incoming radiation. One of BEPOSACS's main achievements was the identification of numerous gamma ray bursts with extra galactic objects. See the linked article for details. Launched by an Atlas Centaur on the 30th of April 1996 into a low inclination on April 29, 2003, the satellite ended its life falling into the Pacific Ocean. Topic spacecraft characteristics BEPOSAX was a three-axis stabilized satellite with a pointing accuracy of 1 foot. The main attitude constraint derived from the need to maintain the normal to the solar arrays within 30 degrees from the Sun, with occasional excursions to 45 degrees for some WFC observations. Due to the low orbit the satellite was in view of the ground station of Melindi for only a limited fraction of the time. Data was stored onboard on a tape unit with a capacity of 450 Mbits and transmitted to ground every orbit during station passage. The average data rate available to instruments was about 60 kilobits per second, but peak rates of up to 100 kilobits per second can be retained for part of each orbit. With the solar panels closed, the spacecraft was 3.6 meters in height and 2.7 meters in diameter. The total mass amounts to 1,400 kilograms, with a payload of 480 kilograms. The structure of the satellite consisted of three basic functional subassemblies, the service module, in the lower part of the spacecraft, which housed all the subsystems and the electronic boxes of the scientific instruments, the payload module, which housed the scientific instruments and the star trackers, the thermal shade structure, that enclosed the payload module, the primary subsystems of the satellite are, the Attitude Orbital Control System AOCS, that performed attitude determination and maneuvered and operated the reaction control subsystem in charge of orbit recovering. It included redundant magnetomers, sun acquisition sensors, three star trackers, six gyroscopes three of which are for redundancy, three magnetic torquers and four reaction wheels, all controlled by a dedicated computer. The AOCS ensured a pointing accuracy of one foot during source observations and maneuvers with a slew rate of 10 degrees per minute. The onboard data handler OBDH was the core for data management and system control on the satellite and it also managed the communication interfaces between the satellite and the ground station. Its computer supervised all subsystem processor activities, such as those of each instrument, and the communication buses. Topic instrumentation BEPOSIX contained five science instruments, Low Energy Concentrator Spectrometer LECS, Medium Energy Concentrator Spectrometer MEX, High Pressure Gas Scintillation Proportional Counter HPGSPC, Phoswitch Detector System PDS, Wide Field Camera WFC, The first four instruments often called Narrow Field Instruments or NFI point to the same direction, and allow observations of an object in a broad energy band of 0.1 to 300 keV 16 to 48,000 attajoules AJ. The WFC contained two coded aperture cameras operating in the 2 to 30 keV 320 to 4,800 AJ range, and each covering a region of 40 by 40 degrees, 20 by 20 degrees full width at half maximum on the sky. The WFC was complemented by the shielding of PDS, which had a nearly all sky view in the 100 to 600 keV (16,000 to 96,000 aj) band, ideal for detecting gamma ray bursts (GRB). The PDS shielding has poor angular resolution. 
In theory, after a GRB was seen in the PDS, the position was refined first with the WFC. However, due to the many spikes in the PDS, in practice a GRB was found using the WFC, often corroborated by a BATSE signal. The position up to arcminute precision, depending on the signal-to-noise ratio of the burst, was found using the deconvoluted WFC image. The coordinates were speedily sent out as an International Astronomical Union and Gamma Ray Burst Coordinate Network Circular. After this, immediate follow-up observations with the NFI and optical observatories around the world allowed accurate positioning of the GRB and detailed observations of the X-ray, optical and radio afterglow. The MEX contained three identical gas scintillation proportional counters operating in the 1.3 to 10 keV range. On 6 May 1997 one of the three identical MEX units was lost when a fault developed in the high voltage power supply. The LECS was similar to the MEX units, expect that it had a thinner window that allows photons with lower energies down to 0.1 keV to pass through and operated in a «driftless» mode which is necessary to detect the lowest energy X-rays as these would be lost in the low field regime near the entrance window of a conventional GSPC. The LECS data above 4 keV is not usable due to calibration issues probably caused by the driftless design. The LECS and MEX had imaging capability, whereas the high-energy narrow-field instruments were non-imaging. The HPGSPC was also a gas scintillation proportional counter, operating at a high 5 atmospheres pressure. High pressure equals high density, and dense photon stopping material allowed detection of photons up to 120 keV AJ. The PDS was a crystal sodium iodide, cesium iodide scintillator detector capable of absorbing photons up to 300 keV AJ. The spectral resolution of the PDS was rather modest when compared to the gas detectors, but the low background counting rate resulting from the low inclination Bepozix orbit and good background rejection capabilities meant that the PDS remains one of the most sensitive high-energy instruments flown. Topic gallery Topic References Bepozix Mission Overview, Astronomy and Astrophysics Supplement Series, Volume 122, April 2, 1997, 299-307 De Court, N. Ruimtunderzuk, De Horizon Vorbage, Wien, SRON, 2003 Low Energy Concentrator Spectrometer 0.1-10 keV, A&A Supplement Series, Vol. 122, April 2, 1997, 309-326 Medium Energy Concentrator Spectrometer 0.1-10 keV, A&A Supplement Series, Vol. 122, April 2, 1997, 327-340 High Pressure Gas Scintillator Proportional Counter HPGSPC, A&A Supplement Series, Vol. 122, April 2, 1997, 341-356 Fosswitch Detection System 15-300 keV, A&A Supplement Series, Vol. 122, April 2, 1997, 357-369 Wide Field, Camera 2-28 keV, A&A Supplement Series, Vol. 125, November November 1997, 557-572 Piro, L.E.A. Sachs Observer's Handbook, 1995 External links Bepozix Science Data Center HEASARC Bepozix Guest Observer Facility